Kia ora everyone, talofa, ciao, malolalei. I hope you're all good in your bubbles today. Today we're going to look at the letter I for island and ice cream and ice block and imagination. I makes the sound I as an in and it also makes the sound I like island. Today we're going to be looking at the letter I. So the alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I can be just one big long stick or it can be a long stick with two short sticks. I'll show you soon. And today I have done a couple of pictures. I made ice blocks. Who likes ice blocks? And I have put numbers on my ice blocks because do you know I like counting? And I thought maybe we could see if we can remember how to count in Tongan. I think I've got it this time. So we go Taha, Ua, Tolu, Fa, Nima. Ono, Fitu, Valu, Hiva, Hongofulu. Look, this one's like a rainbow. Lots of different colours. And I think we could even sing our colour song. Do you remember our colour song in Māori? Ma is white, Fero is red, Kakariki green, Pango is black. Mango is two, a e e o u. Ko fai yellow, padoni brown, ki korangi is blue. Parakaraka is our orange, a e e o u. And this is my little picture for my story. Do you know I like to go sailing on yachts out in the ocean and something I'd love to see is a little island with just like one little tropical tree on it. Did you know out from Auckland there's lots of little islands. The Māori word for island is motu. And this is just a little island up by Kauau Island. There's some little islands in the ocean and they just have one little tropical tree on them. They look so pretty. And on my island, I used my imagination and I made some imaginary little eye flowers. So I'm going to show you how to do big eye. Big eye is a bit like my beautiful tropical tree there. Let's see. So it's just... Big stick, short stick, short stick, I, and little I is like this, short stick and a spot, big stick, little hat like a T, and then we turn it into an I, and short stick and a spot. Sometimes I like to make my little eyes into things like stars and hearts. Maybe when you get good you might like to do some like that. Big eye is a big stick. Island. Maybe when you grow up you'll go sailing out of Auckland and see all the beautiful islands out there. If you want to, you can make your own ice blocks and then you could sell them. You could sing the song, I'm selling ice blocks, I'm selling ice blocks, sugar-coated ice blocks from the corner shop. I'm selling ice blocks, I'm selling ice blocks, nobody knows just where I'll stop. And then you could give them to your family. I hope you have fun. Now I'm going to read you a little story I have at my house. I'm going to read this story to my teddies and toys. This story is called Milo and the Magical Stones. Milo lives on a little island in the sea. 
He's a little mouse. This is his island. In the middle of the sea there was an island, and on the island lived Milo and the other cliff mice. They loved their island. It provided them with food and shelter and protection from the rough storms that pounded the waves against the cliffs. During the summer, Milo and the other little mice worked hard, gathering food. For the winter, they put it in their little caves. And when the day ended, they loved to lie on the nice warm rocks and look at the stars and the moon. Sometimes they liked to skip rocks on the ocean. But when the winter storms arrived, the mice would spend a long time cuddled up, trying to keep warm in their little caves. It was really windy and stormy. One day, when the sun came out, Milo went to look around his island and he noticed something glowing. He poked his stick down and he found a beautiful glowing rock took it back to his cave. It wasn't long before the other mice wanted to come and see it. Milo happily curled up in the corner of his cave with his treasure, but he was not alone for long because the bright light soon attracted the other mice. And it wasn't long before everyone wanted a beautiful golden stone of their own. And they asked Milo to show them where he had found his. But just as they were about to set off, the old mouse called Balthazar hopped up on the rock and he said, Don't forget, the stones belong to the island. If you take something from the island, you must give something in return. And now we have a funny part of the story. We have the happy ending or the sad ending. Which one shall we choose? Shall we have the happy one or the sad one? Shall we do the happy one first? Okay, the happy ending. Let's see what happens. The happy ending. Balthasar is right, said Milo, but what could Milo give the island? He thought about it for many days and then at last he had an idea. He went down to the shore where the sea washed up all kinds of stones and he looked and he found a little stone about the same size as the one he had found. And he decorated it. He sat down and started chipping away the stone. Curious, the other mice gathered around. Milo worked for hours until he had carved a beautiful sun onto the stone. Then Milo led his friends into the crevice in the mountain and put his carved stone in the place of the glowing stones. Look, there they go. Down into the crevice. Wow, look, the little mouse. The other mouse began digging. Directly below the crevice, they found a tunnel that ran deep into the mountain. The further into the mountain they went, the more glowing stones they found. Each mouse just took one and carefully carried it home. Beautiful glowing stones, aren't they? Then Milo... Like Milo, they found ordinary stones along the shore and started to decorate them. Some mice carved, etched and drew on their stones. Others wrapped them or decorated them with flowers and leaves or roots. They carried, they created beautiful artwork and then they carried them deep into the mountain and placed their gifts where the glowing stones had been. Do they look happy? I think they do look happy. Look, and then they all went in the cave. And from then on, the windy winter weather did not bother the mice. They snuggled up happily in their bright, warm caves. Often they got together and told stories. Just like they did in summertime, these gatherings made the long, cold night seem shorter and winter less damp and dark. 
Every year the mice celebrated the beginning of winter. They met in Balthazar's cave and they danced and they sang. And when it got dark, they took the magical stones on a parade along the cliffs as a special tribute to their beloved mountain. And that is the end of this, the happy story. Would you like to hear the sad story? Shall we have a look and see what happens in the sad story? This is called the sad ending. Let's see what happens in this bit. This is a really interesting book. Oh look, only Milo listened to Balthazar. Immediately the other mice started thinking and running down through the caves. They started chipping away at the walls of the tunnel. They tossed the small stones to the side and they only wanted the biggest ones. Only Milo listened to Balthazar and started decorating his stone. Then the mice dragged the glowing stones into their caves. They grew greedy and jealous and spent so much time worrying about who had the most stones and that they couldn't even enjoy the comfort of the stones brought to them. Milo watched his friends sadly. He worried about what Balthazar had said and wondered what would happen. He sighed. There was nothing he could do but get back to work on the gift he had made for the island. Look, one mouse took lots of stones. Soon the mice decided they needed more and more magical stones and they crept back in the tunnel and they dug day and night, piling all the magical stones in their caves until the whole island glowed. They boasted about their stones and they argued about who had the most and the biggest and the brightest. Mine is the best. I have the most. The mice were consumed with greed. As they dug deeper and deeper, the walls of the mountain got thinner and thinner, and before long the mountain was hollowed out completely. <gasps> then suddenly, with a thunderous roar, the mountain collapsed. Giant boulders fell, burying the tunnels in a heap. Waves pounded against the shore, and most... Flood, most of the island was flooded. There was just one little cave left. That's Milo's little cave, where Milo and Balthazar live. Only one cave was left. Milo and Balthazar crouched, trembling in the corner. The stones could have brought such joy and happiness, said Balthazar quietly as he spoke. Milo went back to work carving a stone to give the island in thanks for a magical gift. Wow, I think I like the happy ending better. Do you think you like the happy ending better? And look, these are some of the little gifts they made. That one looks like a little mouse. Maybe you could find some stones and decorate them. I hope you enjoyed that story, Milo and the Magical Stones.